All right, Alexander, we are here with Patrick Lancaster. Patrick, I will have all the information to your channels in the description box down below, as well as a pinned comment, as a pinned comment. And Patrick has some interesting breaking news for us from the front line. So Alexander, Patrick, uh, let's, uh, let's talk about it. Absolutely. Let's absolutely talk about it. So, Patrick, what has happened on the front lines? Some uh, uh, exciting news that you can give us about um, a technological development that has been cracked. So tell us about it, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, first of all, as usual, great to be on with you guys as uh, normal. Thanks for uh, bringing me on so often. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm happy to share things with your viewers. Um so, but on to the point. So uh, I've just done a report on a piece of military equipment that has been captured by Russian forces from Ukrainian forces. And it, it not quite the normal, um, you know, captured uh, vehicle, not even Western uh, or NATO vehicle. This it has been somewhat of a... Um, special prototype uh, that was used and built by Ukrainian forces and Azov battalion uh, for some sort of futuristic war or, uh, it, as they described it, a um, invincible super weapon. And, uh, and I ha was able to bring our viewers a little bit uh, about uh, this uh, piece of equipment. And it was first made in, or it started to be developed in 2015 as a uh, prototype for future uh, fighting. It was supposed to be the best of the best tank, as they, they described it. And actually, as doing investigation on it and looking to see what it actually was, it's not even really a tank. Um, it's it, it has the chassis of a tank, but the overall... Um, it, it's basically a military transport with weapons uh, on it. And we can... Uh, I had a chance to go inside it, around it, speak to the Russian soldiers that captured it and uh, understood a lot more than what seems to be in the uh, Ukrainian uh, PR uh, videos that they put out of how, how this was this special weapon. I mean, even on the, the game War Thunder, there's a petition online to have this added to um, the game itself. Uh, pretty... A lot of hype. Uh, but the fact is that when I say Russia captured this one-of-a-kind prototype, they captured it because they pushed Ukrainian forces back from a, a specific area in Donbass. Uh, it was Ukraine, or Russia was taking new territory. And they found it buried in a hole. Some of the locals brought the Russian soldiers to a specific place. And they found this... Uh, described invincible uh, super weapon buried in this hole and found in fact that it never even entered battle. Um, it, was, it was still totally intact, no signs of battle. The Ukraine just left it in this hole as they retreated. Um, and uh, basically, I, I even got had a chance to kind of... Uh, move some of the turrets back and forth. And it seems like, and was described by Russian forces as kind of not the greatest uh, design because the, the turrets would uh, knock into each other. And a lot of this, I'm trying my best to describe it just in words, but people can find my report on my channel to see more in depth of, you know, what I saw. And also I decided to give people as much information as possible. I also included in my report the PR video release from Ukraine on when they were building this, just to give people as much uh, insight as they can. So it's got the, the Ukrainian side, the Russian side, and then my firsthand account of what I saw. Um, but uh, very surprising uh, to see this. I've seen other captured uh, tanks, Western equipment, but this was definitely you know, for sure, one of a kind. Um, so, you know, I, I thought it was pretty important to show our viewers. And uh, I, 
you know, let me know if you guys uh, have any questions. I can more explain some of the information. Well, I mean, lots of questions has come to mind. But firstly, two very important points that you've just made um, um, over what you've just said, Patrick. Firstly, um, we have another example of a you know invincible Ukrainian weapon. Sounds as if it's not invincible. Um, in fact, from what you've just said, there are clear problems with design. I mean, if the turrets all collide with each other, it doesn't sound to me as if it's a very battle-proof vehicle. And it looks like another example of the stress Ukraine gives to the sort of media aspect of the war, as opposed to the real ones. That's the first thing to say. But the other thing is, here we have a top secret prototype, and it looks as if the Ukrainians are now retreating so fast, perhaps not, not across the whole of the front line. Let's be, uh, you know, let's be realistic and sober about this. But in some places, they're, real, they're retreating so fast that instead of you know, retrieving this valuable prototype, which one would presume they would not want the Russians to capture, they have to abandon it and bury it quickly in a hole where the Russians can find it. Is that an accurate summary of um, the position? Because if, if the last is true, that is an important fact in itself, or so it seems to me. Uh, yes, yeah, it's it, it's very true, and it's, it's speaking of the value of it, it it's actually public uh, uh, open source knowledge that this specific uh, prototype was estimated to cost the uh, Ukrainian government about five million dollars to develop, and that five million dollars just turned out to be, you know, a five a five million dollar hole in the ground. And speaking to you know the Russian forces. Of course, uh, of course, they're a bit uh, biased, but from the information that they said, it's just not a, a good design. Uh, it was so uh, built up in the PR, as you said, and it just turns out to be kind of a useless uh, uh, tank that the Russian soldiers said they'd never take something like that into battle. And it seems the Ukrainians didn't either, yeah, even after it was built. It was more of a just a, a show. What is it exactly? I mean, what is it supposed to do? Is this a tank? If it's not a tank, I mean, is it an infantry fighting vehicle? Is it a, a thing that's it, it almost to seems like kind of a, a hybrid? Yeah, it, it almost seems like a kind of a hybrid. And Ukraine described it as this super battle tank, super weapon. Um, it's described online as a uh, a military vehicle. Um, so, but the fact is they took an old uh, chassis and put some new uh, metal. I mean, they literally just welded a bunch of metal a around it, uh, made the inside a bit bigger and put uh, a, a whole lot of what seemed to be uh, flares and uh, smoke cannons. I mean, like 20 or 30 just on, on the front and then a couple places for a couple uh, anti-tank uh, uh, cannons and guns. And as far as the anti-tank guns, we were uh, explained by the Russian soldiers, again, of course, they're biased, but what they told us is that why would they even put an anti-tank uh, cannon on it? They said the, the armor that they put on it wouldn't take a hit from um, from a tank anyway. So how could it go in battle against tanks? Because there's no reactive uh, armor on it. It's just sheet metal uh, welded on. So uh, it's very a, interesting it's situation. Like, almost almost like a big parade float, it, it, it seems. <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, to me, it sounds like something, you know, you see in a Hollywood movie, some kind of Hollywood movie, you know, the future, futuristic one, you know, with... Uh, a, a, a sort of clanking machine comes across the horizon. Somebody like me who doesn't know anything or hadn't known anything about military affairs might find this all looking very impressive in a film. But in fact, on the actual field of battle, it doesn't actually um, do very much. I mean, it's the sort of thing that, you know, Dr. Frankenstein might have come up with. I mean, from the sound of it, maybe I'm maybe I'm being yeah. a bit... Uh, um, from the look of it as well. Yeah. Uh, and all intended to appear in, you know, um, uh, you know, a sort of not not a movie, but a but a game. As far as I can see, they wanted to have it in a game. Is Am I right about this? This is in a computer game. That yeah, I mean, included in it. Yeah. 
Maybe maybe the uh, the soldiers and engineers that made designed it and made it from the beginning. I mean, from the PR videos, it seems like they were really trying. Um, but uh, you know, regardless of what their uh, ambition was uh, to do in making this Frankenstein, as you call it, which it's very similar, <laughs> um, you know, they didn't succeed. If they were trying to really make this invincible super weapon. You know, I think if it was that good, it wouldn't have been left in a hole and actually would have been used in battle. But if for all the information we have, it was a waste of, of five million dollars. But it seems Ukraine's pretty good at wasting a lot of money. Well, indeed. And one wonders where that five million dollars came from and whether it was part of Western aid and all of that. Um, can I just ask, uh, Patrick, you might not be able to answer this question, um, but um, do we have any idea where this place was, ca- where this thing was captured? I mean, what part of the battlefronts w- it was captured on? Um, I mean, was, if, if, if you're cap- not able captured, to tell us. Uh, you know, it, it was yeah. captured in territory that was uh, 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 captured from Ukraine by Russia in Donbass. Um, oh, that's okay. is, is much that's as all you can we say. Can, that's uh, fine. That's that's fine. That that's absolutely fine. We're not going to uh, uh, probe into this. And um, was it a, so supposed to be, you know, to help them to def- the defense, or was it part of an, uh, you know, intended to or, or presented as being for an armored offensive against the Russians in some way? Well, that, that that's the thing. I mean, it was it was just it wasn't used. I mean, the only the only evidence that we've seen that they actually used this thing was for the video, the PR videos itself. There's no evidence that I was able to find um, about any use of it besides just saying how great it was and, and, you know, how, you know, much it's just this huge innovation in fighting ability. And then it was put in a hole as Ukrainians retreated. Right. You know, it, if I can there was just... absolutely no sign on it that it ever entered, entered battle at all. Battle at all. And that's that's something that started in 2015 and it's still be they're still working on it nine years later. And it just goes ends up in a hole and is never used. Yeah. I mean, and it was just let's let's be care, clear about that. This is one prototype. One uh, prototype. All the public information shows that there was just one of these made for five million dollars. Uh, and uh, just used for PR purposes and uh, abandoned as the, the retreat was given. OK, can I veer to a, to a different topic, one we've talked about many times. Reports came in last night of more shelling of Donetsk City. Are, are, are you able to confirm that? There's been some reports that they've located where it is, a place called Karlova or something like that. But... Um, um, that they, yeah, that so, the Ukrainians shelled Donetsk City again last night. Yeah, um, and actually in the last 36 hours, let's say the last day and a half, there's been, uh, I believe it's about uh, t- 23, 24 civilians injured in Ukrainian attacks between uh, uh, Donetsk and Gorlovka. Um, now these are... Of course, Donetsk is the biggest, but Gorlivka is another bigger city that's also a frontline city or near there. Um, and in in the last 36 hours, about 24, 23, 24 civilians have been injured. And I believe the latest number is up to four, uh, four civilians killed. Um, every hour, there's more and more injured. Um, in, in Gorlivka, there's more were injured today. Yesterday, it was more Donetsk uh, in the Kubashevsky district uh, the in the uh, Kievsky district and Petrovka district. And the majority of these attacks, these it's not just one attack that's injuring all these people. It's many here and there. And the majority as uh, I understand are by the 155 millimeter western supplied uh artillery shells. That's kind of the standard for Ukraine firing into the cities now. And besides that, um, in Gorlivka, they, of course, they use the 155 millimeter shells, but in Gorlivka, they tend to use more of the um, uh, the drones to make attacks. The the, uh, the drones where they, you know, c- camera operated and the, then they just hit what they want. And, you know, it's a shame to think that, you know, so many of these civilians are getting uh, killed and injured by these drones. It's not like they're 
making a mistake. I mean, you can say maybe they are shooting artillery and they meant to shoot somewhere and it hit civilians. No, these drones, they have cameras on it and they have glasses and they see what they're going to hit and they hit civilians. Of course, you know, they... Uh, military is hit, are hit as well, but these attacks in Gorlivka are around the center of Gorlivka with these drones attacking uh, civilians. And can I just uh, repeat Hard. again that delib deliberate indiscriminate attacks on civilians are a war crime. And I mean, this is not controversial um, and there's no justification or excuse for it if it's done intentionally in the way that you describe. And um, 155 millimeter shells, who makes them? Ukraine makes them? Russia makes them? Um, or are they no, made No, no, the these, these are NATO, yeah. NATO supplied. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm right in saying 155 millimeter shells used in this conflict are exclusively NATO supplied. Russia makes 152 yes. millimeter shells. So it's a different caliber. If it's 155 millimeter, these are shells that we, Western countries, NATO countries, Britain makes shells, United States makes shells, Germany makes shells, and they're being used, amongst other things, to shell places like Donetsk and Gorlovka. I mean, that is, that's the position, as I understand it. Is that right, Patrick? Yes, for sure. Yeah. And in addition, sure. these 155 millimeter shells also have the U.S. made uh, cluster munitions uh, that, you know, if if Russia uses cluster munitions, the United States says it's a war crime. But if you, if Ukraine uses cluster munitions on civilians, uh, it's just, you know, cost of war. But it, and I, I had forgot to mention one of these attacks, at least one from last night on the Kubyshevsky district of Donetsk was a result of a cluster bomb. There's there's photo and video evidence of it. And cluster bombs are area bombs, and again, using them indiscriminately against civilian targets is a war crime. Yes. Just, just, just to repeat that point again, because it's one that I think one should not overlook. So, I mean, we have a situation on the battlefront. This is, you know, where I'd like to, I mean, Alex might have a few things to say, but this is where I'm going to finish. We have a situation on the battlefront. Ukraine is under intense pressure by all accounts now. You know, they've, they're facing pressure in Bakhmut, in Chasovyar, in Avdevka, in Pervomaisky, but they're still shelling Donetsk city and they're now shelling Gorlovka as well. They're still focused to an extraordinary degree on doing this. I, I have to say, putting aside the um, cruelty, it, it doesn't seem very rational that they would do this. But, you know, they still do it. Yeah, unfortunately. And when I asked the civilians, um, you know, first, my standard questions, just to be, you know, clear uh, to the, the world, I asked the civilians that whose homes are hit. I said, uh, are there any military targets near here? And they say, of course not. And I said, OK, then why? Uh, why do, how do you think? Why do Ukraine soldiers fire on your neighborhood? And they said some of the main answers are they want to kill us. They want to terrorize us. They want us to leave. And people say they're not going to leave because it's their land. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, Patrick, thank you. I, I'm aching to watch your program, by the way, and see this thing. Azovets, I think you said it was cool, was Azovets. Is that yes. right? And yes. can I just also say, um, interesting point, that it's also apparently part designed or funded by the Azov Battalion. And um, interesting yes. to see yeah, that yeah, they're in, in built. involved. Yeah, yeah built by them. I mean, involved in weapons development amongst all the other things that these people do. Um, though it doesn't seem as if they come up with a very um, effective weapon. Alex, is there anything you want to add there? Uh, I, I will just have all of uh, Patrick's information in uh, the description box down below. I'll also put a link to, to the video so that uh, right. all our viewers can see what this, what this wonder weapon or <laughs> alleged wonder weapon is all about uh we're all very curious now to to see what five million dollars buys you i guess well know, absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely a single a single prototype for armored vehicle incredible yeah. uh, and, and i think you said patrick that it's based on an old chassis so uh, which yeah. they've sort of tinkered with yeah <laughs> so you know it's uh, um five million dollars it does seem rather rather a lot of money to play around with an old chassis but anyway there we go <laughs> 
There you have it. All right, Patrick, thank you very much for thank you. Uh, joining us. Thank, thank, thank you, guys. Uh, it's really great to be on. Uh, can't wait till next time. Fantastic. Me thank too. You.